it's that time of year again. So, it's 9-11, folks, and that means that the ultra-nationalists and the ultra-patriots and the just all-around American idiots are frankly taking this day to remember that 15 years ago, a couple of planes crashed into the, into the World Trade Center towers and the Pentagon one crashing into a field in Pennsylvania. Now, lots of people's lives ended that day. That's, it's horribly sad. We remember it greatly. I was 10 years old at the time. And basically, we all know the events of 9-11. If you don't, you probably are some teenagers are starting high school. But basically what happened is that um, on, a t on a Tuesday morning in, on September 11th, 2001, um, basically the uh, World Trade Center was hit by two planes and the Pentagon was hit by one plane uh, that most consider would be uh, done, was done by Arabs and Muslims of, that belong, that later we learned had links to Al-Qaeda. Now, conspiracy theorists and other people also say that there was a government inside, it, this was a government inside job, or that possibly even uh, Clinton Bush um, had knowledge of this prior, which technically Clinton, uh, Bill Clinton did. You know, Bill Clinton had prior knowledge of Al-Qaeda and the Taliban, and he did very little to stop it. Um... And Bush knew, and Bush didn't even fucking do anything about it. But then again, Bush was also retarded. Um, so basically what happened is that, um, you know, this, this event happened, and it was terribly tragic, and it, it was one of the worst attacks to happen on American soil. Now, for 15 years, Americans have used this this day as basically that that one day in September 2001 to discriminate, have prejudice against, and even outright attack and kill people of Arab descent or who happen to be Muslim. Now this has a lot to do with xenophobia and Islamophobia, but it also has a lot to do with white wing privilege, or white privilege, and just outright you know, this ultra-nationalism that exists in the country and the patriotism. And as controversial and hard as this statement's going to be, people need to learn to move on and to get over it. This was an event that happened 15 years ago. Do you think that we're still harping on the Japanese and still... Uh, and still going on about Pearl Harbor after, like, what, 75 fucking years since that happened? Because, you know, the 75th anniversary of that's coming up in December. Um, and I don't really see anybody that's going to be harping on that because, fuck, we're already doing business with them. Um, but basically, this, for 15 years, there's been this, this hatred, this prejudice, and this Islamophobia and xenophobia towards the people of Islam and um, and towards Arab dissented individuals in general. And the problem with that is that you're try is basically you're trying to equate an entire religion with basically the ideology and and actions of basically what is. 1% of 1%. You're basically, you know, you're attacking an entire group of people that aren't even affiliated with groups like ISIS or Al-Qaeda or the Taliban. You're in total talking about maybe a couple hundred thousand people that are 
that are, you know, extremists or have really, really strong right wing views. But then you're talking about another, you know, you know, ninety nine point nine nine percent of Muslim individuals and Arab individuals who don't even have a fucking tie to any of that. They're just regular people trying to live their life. And hate to even break it to you, but there's also some Arabs that are actually, you know, Christian. Uh, even some that are even Jewish. You know, people that practice different religions. You know, and I say Christian Arabs because even in, in places like Lebanon and Iraq and Syria, particularly, and even in Egypt, there are Christian Arabs. There are Christian Arabs that live in, in Israel, although they are oppressed themselves. Um, I mean, there's, there's Christian Arabs that live all throughout the world. There's not just Muslim Arabs. And so that's something that people need to understand first and foremost, is that there is a, that population out there that don't equ even equate with, Mus with uh, Islam at all. Now, if you look also in the text of Islam, yes, there's a lot of stuff that, that talks about, you know, uh, peace, and there's stuff that even talks about war. You know, that's basically what, I mean, war and peace is basically just the Bible and the, and the Quran and the Torah basically written in a nice literary fashion. It's basically the, it basically just talks about, you know, the lives of aristocrats and, you know, living, you know, a very orthodox life and during times of war and peace. And that's basically what Christianity, what Abraham, what's basically what all religions do. They just trying to, they're just people trying to live their lives, you know, the best they can during times of, you know, turmoil and times of, you know, ease. Now, people will always try to make the argument, well, the Quran is full of violence. It tells to kill people who don't believe. Yeah, so does the Christian Bible. I mean, that was the whole point of the Crusades, was to basically kill people that weren't Christian or failed to convert to Christianity. Uh, the people that came over from, uh, that were people that were forced into slavery and people that were you know, even natives that were in the lands that the imperial, the European imperialists conquered were forced at the point of blades and artillery to convert or die. And that's not basically sectarian violence itself? Hmm? Uh, of course it's not, because that's, the, it's just being a good Christian, right? Or if that was a long time ago. Yeah, no. And especially considering there's still Christian violence that occurs against, you know, people of color and people of different sexual orientations today, there still is very much a Christian violent nature. Basically, the running gag is that if you, if you don't think that, that Christianity was ever like radical Islam, you don't know your Christian history, and you obviously don't. So, just to point that out to people. Um, because basically, the Abrahamic texts all say pretty much the similar thing. They basically say, love thy neighbor, but kill anybody that doesn't believe. You know, it's like, live a peaceful life, but, you know, I don't know. You can get, you can, you, if you give two shekels and... A couple of sheep to to your daughter's rapist that she has to marry him. Yeah, that sort of crap. You know, there's a lot of fucked up shit in all these texts. And, you know, basically the Christian Bible and the Quran, the only thing that separates them are the basically the differences in who they believe was the fucking messenger of God. 
does it really freaking matter who the messenger is? Isn't it more important that you just got the message? And the message is basically, there's is basically there's a page of good shit, a page of bad shit, page of good shit, page of bad shit. It basically is the same crap, but ultimately at the end, the message is do unto others as you would have others do unto you. Basically, don't be a fucking dick and just live your life the best you can. That's what the what the Islamic Quran says. That's what the Christian Holy Bible says. That's what the Torah says. And that's actually what most religions have preached for thousands of years. But no, Islam is the one that's evil. No, okay. No, it, Islam is no more evil than Christianity is. It's no more evil than Hinduism and Buddhism. And it's no more evil than Norse paganism. It's really no different. And people need to learn to understand that and get the fuck over it. Come together and be united and realize that the Muslim next door most likely is not going to blow you up. That the Arab... Uh, guy that runs the convenience store down the street is most likely just trying to feed his family and is not connected to Al-Qaeda, you stupid ass. So, take this into consideration this September 11th when uh, Arabs and Muslims are, are celebrating Eid. They're not celebrating 9-11, they're celebrating a religious holiday that basically pertains to their religion. It basically, this one is uh, Eid, um, Eid al-Adha, which is the festival of the sacrifice, also called the sacrifice feast or Bakr Eid. It's the second of two Muslim holidays celebrated worldwide each year and considered holier of the two. It honors the willingness of Abraham, or in this case, Ibrahim, uh, to sacrifice his son as an act of submission to God's command before God then intervened through his angel Jabril and informs him that his sacrifice has already been accepted. The meat from the sacrificed animal is prepared for, uh, preferred to be divided into three parts. The family retains one third of the share, another third is given to relatives, friends, and neighbors, and the remaining third is given to poor and needy. And basically, that's what it is. It's basically the celebration, the religious holiday of basically when Abraham tried to sacrifice his son for to you know to prove his loyalty to God, or in this case Allah. And then Gabriel or Gabriel in the Christian tradition and known as Jabril in the Arabic in the Muslim form came down and basically intervened and said, no, you've already proven your loyalty. That's the same thing. And so what I'm trying to basically let people in know about this is that that is what, you know, this is proof right there that Islam and Christianity are really no different. The only difference is who the messenger was. So, before you go saying, oh, well, they're celebrating 9-11, they're celebrating the fact that, you know, they killed 2,900 people. No. If, if you actually look into it, they're actually celebrating the religious holiday of when Jabril came down and intervened in the sacrifice, of, you know, uh, in Abraham's uh, sacrifice of his son. It's basically it, Gabriel's intervention, it, that sort of crap. It's all about that. It's all about that mysticism and that you know sort of crap that you know went on ancient years ago. It has nothing to do with 9/11 or anything else. In fact, the only violence in it is the very fact that some guy was tripping in the desert 2,000 years ago and tried to kill his son. That's pretty much all that it is. So, take this all into consideration before you open your ignorant fucking mouth this weekend. I'm NorCal Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement. This has been NorCal Corner. Happy 9-11!